But if you want to get on the train with me, if you want to lock arms with me, if you want to just take it one step at a time, guarantee capital G, all caps, highlighted, underscored, and italicized guarantee, I can get you to move and to rewire how you think. It's going to be hard. It's going to be challenging. And brother, you better get ready because if you tell me you're in, you're going to want to quit. We all do. What's up? Chris Crone here, back with The Chris Crone Show. And today I've got Satema, who is joining us. Dude, the dude has a Super Bowl ring. He's a results-oriented coach. He's been playing a game for the last 20 years, helping get the most out of people. And of course, he did that starting in the game athletics. He did three years in the NFL. But he's taken that to a professional level of helping human beings get the most out of their lives. Brother, how you doing? Chris, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for the introduction and thank you for having me. I'm so grateful, so humbled and so honored. Bro, 2002 BYU, one of the final years with Lavelle. Uh, and and that's, that's what you had to prepare you for going into the NFL where you've got thousands in all these colleges competing, very few, like 10,000, right? Like a ton every year are trying to get in the game. Very few are gonna make it super competitive. Lavelle was like, um, dude, he was like a famous coach. How, how was that experience? Lavelle was like, in my, my <laughs> humble and honest opinion, he's one of the best college coaches because he coached football, but he built young men. I saw this man into his 60s, into his 70s, just love on people, care about people. I even went to him uh, before my senior year, I had a, my a fourth shoulder surgeon. I'm like, man, I don't know if I can do this. I was super depressed. It's like, I don't even know if I can do this. I mean, do, do you think I can sit a year out? And he looks at me, he goes, no, Satema, we need you. The team needs you and people in the world need you. You're going to play and you're going to be just fine. So just pick yourself up and let's go. That was it. And then I went and had a phenomenal senior year. So Lavelle, awesome to play with him. Right. And then, of course, you got drafted to the Patriots. And was it that first year that you guys went to the Super Bowl? My rookie year was the dynasty began, right? 2001 wow. into 2002. And by Bill Belichick, we had a great team, a lot of vets on the team. Tom Brady was my teammate. I shared the same agent. I, Chris, I'm telling you, man, like, I could not have had a better situation to go from BYU yep. into New England to have these yep. two GOAT type of coaches. And I learned so much about football, so much about life. Wow. What was in that first season? Like, are there any moments that really stick out to you where you felt like, Hey, I'm a part of this team. I'm contributing. I'm doing my part. What, uh, what stands out to you in that transition? Cause that's really big to go from geez. I mean, college to pro. Yeah. So, you know, you're nervous. I remember I was nervous. Like, Oh my gosh, like I'm, I'm all conference. I'm the sack leader of the conference. I'm the team captain at BYU, but there's still this unknown, right? It's like, okay, I'm about to go to the NFL. And, and I remember my buddy's like, dude, it, I promise, man, you're going to you're gonna beat these dudes. And I'm nervous. And you get up there and it's, it's, I'm nervous. I'm anxious. Do I belong? Am I worthy to be here? Can I do it? Mm. We, we go through warm-ups. We get into the first drill. And it's one-on-ones. And I'm going against Matt Light, who is a 12-year starter out of Purdue. And I beat him. Wow. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Wow. And I beat him again. And then Joe Andrews, he's starting left guard. And I beat him. And I'm just doing my signature moves. And they're like, dude, what is this stuff you're doing? And I'm like, it's football. It's like riding a bike. And it was that fast where I'm like, I belong here. Absolutely so, belong. So, so right out of the gate, I mean, I know we're talking football, but let's just talk about life for a moment. Because oh. when you're in the game of professional sports, you're trying to win these crazy contracts. You're a kid, right, that was trained in these skills and these abilities. And then you, you dream of fame and fortune and just playing really big and being on an all-star team. And you had all these things happen. But all of the same insecurities that you just brought up in the game of football, I think about all the daily human beings in life that are playing the game of, well, am I worthy? Am I going to make it? Like, am I even allowed to be here? Because there's so many human beings that I don't think, I mean, they won the Lucky Sperm Club. They beat off billions and trillions of competitors. They made it to the egg. They got here. And yet I just think of so many human beings that are sleepwalkers. They're being these zombies going through life and they're shut down and they're not playing all out and they're acting like they lost. So at some point you made a transition from playing a very competitive athletic game of life and you've transitioned that into helping human beings 
not in athletics. You're helping them in their physical bodies. You're helping them with their spiritual nature. You're helping them in their relationships. You're helping them in their finances. I mean, first of all, that's a huge transition. How do you know who is quote unquote worthy to play with for you to coach with, to be an all-star in their life? You know, it's, it's like anything else. If someone wants to drive a Mercedes, they're going to go pay hundred to $250,000 to drive a Mercedes. And if someone wants to drive an Accord, which is nothing wrong with a, a Toyota Honda versus a Mercedes or a Rolls Royce, it, there's nothing wrong with those. So in the game that I started with coaching, I just knew I wanted to work with the most highly committed people, like people who were in the mindset of this has to happen. Okay. So, 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 so pause for a second. You don't just work with anybody. You're looking for peak performance in human beings in general that are committed to playing life at, at like a really, truly committed level. Yes. Truly committed. What, what, what yeah. happens if you, what happens to all the people that are like, dude, pick me, but I'm not committed. Like, how does that go down? So we have obviously other courses, other programs, but to work with me, I probably similar to you, like to work with me, there's a significant investment and then there's a real commitment. And I tell people, look, the, the investment is the easy part being committed, like really being what from our language, like committed is a way of being, yeah, yeah. it's a place you come from. And I know you get this cause you are highly committed. I, to I'm just, I, I can't help it, dude. I just have to ask. I got a hundred <laughs> grand right here <laughs> and I, I'm positive. I can buy a little bit of your time for a hundred grand. How do you know if I'm committed and not just, it's like, I get money as its own commitment, but there's some yep. people where they stroke the check and they're still not there yet. They're yeah, still there, there's, there's people who stroke a check. And that's why I always say like the money's the easy part, whether you stroke a check, throw it on the car, take a loan out, the money's the easy part. So how do you know someone's committed? I have a three, like three tier definition of what it means to be committed. I want to hear number, this. Yeah. Number one, it means you do what is required. Okay. I remember I, I was in Russell Brunson's inner circle years ago and I dropped this and I was like, doing your best is for kids, but oh, doing wow. what's required gets you what's desired, right? Every result that is desired has specific actions, ways of being skills, information, strategies that are absolutely Bro, required. you just, you just, do you know how many people listening just got broken in that moment when you said, uh, my best is not enough? <laughs> Doing your best is for kids. Doing your best Doing is your, for kids. Oh my gosh. I have a t-shirt that says, like, do what's required. And on the back, it says, because doing your best is for kids. Wow. Can you, can you just break it down a little bit? Because I think that there's this victim song that gets sung everywhere. Like, I'm doing my best. Isn't my best enough? Man, the sad part, and it's not, I mean, it's sad for a lot of people that we think doing what we know is going to get us there. We think doing everything we can is going to get us there. We even think doing our best is good enough. The fact is, if you want a result that is desired and it's very high, yeah. the only way to get that is you have to do what is required and you have to be who is required and you have to say what is required. And there's necessary, you know, we call it necessary required actions and a necessary required way of being and necessary required information. And so now that's, the, so that's the first word, do what is required. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I want to, but, but, but pause, yeah. cause I know you've got two yeah. and I know you got three, but just two days ago, I was on the phone with someone that became my business partner in a business like three months ago. And they called me and they basically were airing out all these grievances. And they said, I was told this, and this is what happened. And then this happened and this happened. And after about 15 things, she says, and I'm not complaining by the way, cause I've been to your workshops and, and I'm telling you I'm a positive person. And this woman is clearly complaining. And so I just shut up and she goes on for another 20, 30 minutes and just continues airing things out and airing things out and all these issues. And, and when she was all done at some point, I just start laughing. And she said, excuse me, are you? And she called me out. She's like, are you laughing? I said, well, I don't want to be rude, but I'm totally laughing at you. She says, why? I said, because you're a school teacher with school teacher pay. And you signed up to do a business with me that is designed to make a million dollars a year. And everything that you just said that you don't like, I got news for you. To make a million dollars, you didn't even get through 1%. You've got to literally do that entire list 100 more times to get a million bucks. So I'm going to ask you two questions. One is if you know that, are you still in it? That was, I didn't even get past that first question because I was, I couldn't stop laughing. I'm like, 
Do you know how many times I have failed as a human being? And it's because your best, no, the universe doesn't give a shit about your best. It only cares whether you can meet the requirements. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm taking notes, bro. I'm listening because you're hundred percent right. It's your best is for kids. And it's a toddler notion when we're little, do your best, do your best. Your best is enough. I'm like, you're right. That's five-year-old language that is trying to encourage a little victim to push just a little bit harder and success and results and outcomes don't care. It just, do, this doesn't care about your effort. It cares whether you get the outcome. I'm, I'm smiling because I'm like, brother, you, you preaching, brother. Like we- No, 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 that. dude, you I know what I'm it. talking and about. I, but that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm smiling because I'm like, this is my energy and language, which is yours. Yeah. It's like, yeah. don't tell me what your best is. Don't well, tell me that you did everything you could. It's like, did you do what was required yeah, yesterday? I, I got a theory on this. I got a theory. I don't know if you agree with it, but so tell yeah. me, I've got, I, I think that there's two types of people. There's results people. And there's list checker offers and the list people are like, okay, I, I had a list of 14 things and I got to the end of the day and I checked everything off of the list. And I'm like, cool, that's a pass or fail approach to life. But that doesn't mean that your effort is actually going to produce the result. It's like, okay, uh, in my business, we use the languaging of touching and moving. And it's this idea of, did you touch the problem or did you move the problem? And um, you can touch something all day long and say, we talked about it, we touched it, we discussed this, we had a combo about that. And it's like, cool, just so you know, you don't get anything for touching. You only get something if you can move the object across the finish line and actually hit the objective. So talk all you want about being a list checker, offerer, and a toucher, but if you ain't moving it, then none of your effort meant anything at all. Yeah, uh, amen. I agree 100%, man, like 100%. So principle five for us is we got 13 principles. Principle five, commitment alters everything. Principle 11, results matter. Oh. Right, results matter. <laughs> like that's the game. By their fruits, you shall know them. Like don't tell me like your effort, all that stuff. Like yeah. again, I love this conversation because it's a straight yeah. line. My, my, a straight my daughter, line conversation. My, and my daughter was laughing at my company shirt I was sporting for the first time the other day because it had all of our company's core values on it. And she was fine with everything until she got to the second last line and it said results or die. <laughs> and the idea is you get the result or nothing mattered, you might as well be dead. And I, I get accused, I'm sure as you do from time to time of being a, an extreme human being. Um, but is it really extreme if you're not getting the result? I love what you're saying here, do what's required. Um, so Tell me this, the second principle of commitment. If the first one is you got to do what's required, yeah. what's the second one? The second one is do what you said you would do. So integrity. Pure integrity. And that's why when you, when, because we teach people, look, the moment you say, I'm going to go be like, for, I'm going to go be a, a, a real estate millionaire with Chris Crone. And I'm going to do this. If you're really saying that, yeah. what you're saying is I will do anything and everything that is required. And I'm also gonna do the stuff. If I said, I'm gonna go be a real estate millionaire, then I'm gonna go do what I yeah. said I would do. And most people, they they cannot, they, they don't even keep their word. Yeah. God, it's, it's, it's disheartening. So I, I actually use this really kind of little measurement system that I, I had to come up with something inside my company because when someone drops the ball, people think that's okay. They're like, well, I'm human. I erred. And I'm like, well, it, it depends what you're tolerating because you get what you tolerate. So I, um, for integrity, I use this thing called the batting average. And I basically say, hey, um, if I step up to the bat 10 times and I connect with the ball three times, technically they're going to say I'm batting 300, 300 out of a thousand. And, and, and that's great. That's enough to almost be a hall of famer, a really great batter, for someone that says, shoot, when someone's putting 80, 90, 100 plus miles an hour on that ball, like I've gone, I've actually gone up against professional pitcher for fun just to see if I could hit and connect with them. I could, you? I could not one time in like 12 swings, I couldn't even touch the ball. I have so much mad respect because 300 is really good. But then I say, cool, let's use the batting average numbers for your integrity. Well, I committed to do 10 things and I did three of them. Okay, that wouldn't put you in the Hall of Fame except for of losers because um, in life, and I always ask people, it's like, hey, out of 10 things you say you're going to do, how many are you going to do? Well, I, I, do, I do seven out of 10. I'm like, cool. You can't work in my company. Well, what if I was nine out of 10? Cool. You can't work in my company. And brother, you're saying it right there. Like there are some things that, you know, people love to say you can't be perfect. I'm like, no, but there's a few things you can be. And in my world, 
when it comes to what you say you're going to do, you have to be perfect. And, 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 and that sounds like it sounds kind of harsh to some people, but if you don't have integrity, you, you don't have anything. And, and so when I say, Hey, preaching. so Tim, I'm going to call you in five minutes. And for most people, that's like a, that's a, that's like a phrase that means I'll, I'll hit you back eventually. When I say I'll call you back in five minutes, if I call you back in six minutes, my integrity quotient just dropped. Because I, I, I just act like the universe is literal. So how do you, I mean, I just share with you a measuring system, but how do you really know if people are going to do what they say they're going to do? So I believe that like high, highly committed clients are not, they're not walking around out there. You actually create a highly committed client. You create, or I create these people to be their word through powerful conversations, through insights and distinctions. So I, someone may come into my world and, and they may be with your language, like batting 700, like they're close. But I just tell them, if we're going to work together, you have to do what you say you're going to do, which means you commit to less things. But yeah. everyone in the world and in your world and the universe knows the moment you commit, it's done. It's a yeah. done yeah. deal. And there's a power that, as you know, that flows into your world the moment you begin to keep your well, word. Yeah. So I, 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 when I talk to people, I'm like, hey, start with the small things. Like if you say you're going to do it, do it, right? Because something very powerful does happen when you do keep your word, when you put faith in yourself, not God, not other people, but yourself, because you know that you'll do what you say, then when you get confidence and you start making bigger and bigger commitments, but you know, you'll follow through, like that is the start of a human being beginning to express power. So I, I write you a hundred thousand dollar check might be cheap for your normal fees. And I get a little bit of time with you and you read me my rights and you say, Chris, there's three things here. Number one is you, you, you got to do the required. You get to number two, you got to do what you say you're going to do. And we agree to have a phone call at noon today. And I hop on 10 minutes late. What's the conversation you're, what's the conversation you're having with me? I'm, cu I'm just curious. Oh, right. Yeah. Like, well, first of all, um, I wouldn't answer. And then I would say, Hey, look, call me now. Then we get on the phone call and I, all I'm going to say is, Again, everyone's different, but I might say, Chris, is this, is this how you really roll? Well, dude, I wrote you a hundred thousand. I wrote, I wrote you a hundred thousand dollar check, right? I'm here now. 12, 10 is 12, 10, 12 o'clock is 12 o'clock. And we're going to dive deep into this, pr probably spend the next 45 minutes talking about where they show up <laughs> your yeah. word. Like, but yeah. like really like what is the root cause of this yeah. way of being that you've been trained, taught and educated. And we'll pick that apart to the point where there's a high, it's, it's highly likely this person really gets it. Like you'd get it and be like, you would then go pay attention to being on time. And, and yeah. again, I'm my family and people know, like if you're on time, you're late. Yeah. So you're early and, and you become yeah. this person that everyone just knows if Satema says it, it's done. It's, it's done. 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 Bro, I need, I, when this podcast over, I'm like, I better find some business or some fun thing or something to do with you. Cause it's not easy to find someone of integrity, but when you do the game gets fun because when people always do what they say they're going to do, it's insane what you can do. I think the majority of drama in life comes from the mismatch of saying one thing and doing something different. It is Chris. And like, even like, like I, I've trained my team this way when we have like a, a strategy or a sales call, I would tell people, call me right on time, not one minute late, or we will reschedule. Be in an environment where you can be fully present, completely uh, com distraction-free, fully present, yeah. and completely yeah. open. Can you agree to do this? I'm like, yes, perfect. If you do not call on time, we will cancel the call. I will say no to money because I'm trying to get these people to understand the transformation doesn't start when you pay me. It started the moment you came into my ecosystem. You start to see the way we operate and where we come from. So it's fun to have people say, before my call with you, I was like look, looking at my watch and they're like, call. Yes. Yeah, it's I fun, love it, man. brother. So we got, we got requirement. We got integrity. What's number three? And number three is act decisively hmm. regardless of thoughts feelings, emotions, and moods Ooh. act decisively regardless or in spite of thoughts, feelings, emotions, and moods. And I tell people, you're going to have lizard brain activity. You're going to have the amygdala. You're going to have fears and doubts and depressions. And what will they say? You're going to have all those all the time. 
You just have to learn how to take decisive action. Whatever you said you were going to do, whatever's required, go, go, like become someone who's decisive. And I'm, and people are like, wait, wait, that's it. I'm like, yeah, because committed people, they know where they're going and then they go. And then they act decisively, even though they have thoughts, feelings, emotions, and moods. I don't feel like it. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. What if I feel like just go. There are only two reasons then that you're really saying that people don't, act decisively and one is thoughts and the other is feelings because thoughts emotions moods they're all feelings you're basically saying it all comes down to your belief system and your feeling system yeah and you know as well as i'd like i have a thought uh, some thought pops into my head i can either latch onto it and believe it or i can just watch it pass by like a cloud and i love like again my language is like there's like these two types of thoughts. There's just these thoughts that come and go. We have thousands and thousands and tens of thousands. And then there's a generated thought, a created thought that I intentionally go and create. And most people, they have a thought, they believe it, then it turns into a feeling. I'm not good enough. Oh shit, I'm not good enough. I don't feel good enough. I'm not powerful. And then it just steamrolls and snowballs. And yeah. that's why I'd like act decisively. Go. Go do what you're supposed to do. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm reading this book right now, The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. And I'm uh, yes. Uh, oh, there you go. So I struck a chord. So his entire book is basically, you just described it so well that you become the observer of your thoughts and feelings and you just let them come and go without getting attached to them because we'll find these thoughts and I have feelings that don't feel good. And when it's all, it's weird. It's like, I'm going to play with this. It, wait, it smells like shit. <laughs> it looks like, let's play with it. I'm like, what are you doing? You stop playing in the cesspool because the mind can take you to some really funky places. Um, so it sounds like you've read that book, but you, I think you just demonstrated so perfectly that your thoughts and your feelings can, they can either make you more decisive or they can distract you from it. Yeah, 100%. And most so, people, they're so trained, taught, and educated yeah. to pay attention. They actually believe every thought. They believe the thoughts. I'm like, they're not even true. They're not even I true. Why are you real. believing them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So learning how to question your thoughts is such a big deal in life. I'm questioning everything, frankly. Um, so this is interesting. Thank you for answering my question on what, how you really find someone who's committed. It really comes down to will you do what's required? Will you have your integrity? And will you take action? And I, I know you framed it a little different, but I'm like, wow, those are actually, that's, those are three really good words for what commitment is um, powerful. Listen, I want you to go deep on this idea of Titan immersion, because you've been putting on these fully immersive events. I'm not going to pretend that I really know your world. I'm just here to get to know it. And for everyone listening, Titan immersion, what is that? Yep. So uh, we, well, we just finished up the last shield made an immersion we, that's our women's program titan immersion is the men's program and it is a three week well it's a four week right there's three weeks leading up to of this deep dive they go through about 12 hours of content and sharing and rewiring reprogramming so they, this is week three the final week of the buildup on monday a week from today we got uh, like a dozen men showing up they're going to show up here to hq and we're going to take them through a full four days of immersion where we break guys down. Then we build them back up. We rewire, reprogram, and we help them to put a blueprint in place to help them blast off and take off. And like, I love it. By the time the program's done, men come in, like trying to figure out life, whether in a midlife crisis, whether, whether they're just stuck in a really yeah. good place, they're comfortable, or for some of them, they're, they're back in the shit and they're trying to get out of it again. And brother, we, you know, again, it's been almost, a, actually it has been a decade of running this for the men. Wow. And I love, it, it is He's, heart and soul. It is grit and grind. It is everything. There's, um, you've heard of great life or landmark forum trainings or things like this. When you say breakdown. Love landmark. Okay. So this, does this fall a little bit in idea of that kind of breakdown and like facing your, like facing yourself and maybe getting feedback from other people or like. Yeah. And, and the way we do ours is like. You know, you can see, I love classroom. I, I'm all about the classroom and, and the seminar, three day, four day, two day. There's something special when you put a man with an 80 pound bag oh. and he's planking and he's push up and he's, he's getting waterboarded in the ocean and they're in, you're in their face and you're, they, but they've committed to go all in. So whatever we tell them to do, they're going to do, you'd be a surprise, but you know this cause you play the game in life. When men get under physical duress and physical exhaustion, yeah. it all comes out. Like the That's, truth comes out. 
you got to hit the wall. Uh, I used to do that through distance running, but it sounds like you have more progressive methods than um, hitting the wall at three hours in a running. <laughs> Waterboarding, like, <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's intense with what we do, and it's just designed to help people, like, really cut through the crap real fast. People say, man, I feel like I've been here for three weeks when, they, when they're here for four days. Yeah. Because it's such a time warp, a vortex of time, a collapse in the time. And I love the methods. Like by the time someone's done, I'm telling you, you have people walking out of here just gleaming and beaming with light, but they also have a specific blueprint how to go get this thing they want. They know things they got to let go of. It's amazing. Bro, you, you almost had me in like a secret sales pitch. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like <laughs> biting. I'm like, shoot, this sounds so exciting. So you help someone with punching bag and a number of de de different techniques get to their end, get to their edge where everything can come out and they can figure out all the things that aren't working for them in life. And they finally get to own it. Like they get so, they're so wrapped up in their comfort zone, cuddled up in their softest, you know, with, with hot cocoa and sitting by the fire and you strip everything away. You push them out into the cold, into the most uncomfortable place. And that's the teardown of finding themselves. What was step two? And then we, we build them back up. We start yeah. the rebuild. So you 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 cut someone open and gut them and get them to vomit and get them to put all their stuff on the table. Yeah. And for some of these guys, they, they, they're like attached. They're like, no, but this is my story. This uh, is the truth. This is the truth, confusion. Chris. Yeah. Yeah. And then we start to build them back up. But we do this through principles, through models, through protocols. And when you start to rewire someone, Right, repetitively rewire, rewire. Then you add the physical with the verbal, physical with the visualization, physical with the spiritual. You just rewire, like you just pound it in. Yeah. This is why they're like, I can do way more. I've been playing small. Oh my gosh, I'm dreaming bigger than ever. Yeah. I know my, what we call, we have a term OSG, old self gravity, hmm. right? Old self gravity. It's like we, we help these people realize you can break free. And you can go, great, go create something brand new that's incredible. What's up, Chris Crone here. I am pausing my own podcast to make sure that you have my cell phone number. Because as you're listening and thinking to yourself, man, I wish I could text Chris and ask him a real estate question or a business question, a marriage question, a health question. I got news for you. The phone number is right here. It's 385 217 3477. Save this in your phone and literally start texting me right now. Just drop your name and say, Hey, Chris, it's whoever you are, and ask me a simple question. Let's go. Where are people, where are people finding you for this kind of stuff? So we, we run ads. Like, again, you know, most people aren't going to go in like, My life sucks. I'm stuck. You can. And then what happens is we just run our interrupt, inter um, like interrupt marketing. Like, people are scrolling. This is the story we hear all the time. Guys are like, and they're like, what, what is this thing? And they click boom into the, into the funnel. And then we'll get these applications at midnight, two in the morning, six in the morning. Guys are like watching this thing, fill, they're balling, filling out an application. And like, and it's crazy within a 72 hour period from the first time they saw us, they're giving us their credit card. There's no written receipt. There's no written. It's like a phone call, a credit card and into our world, they come and off we go. When people are done and they exit this world, what changes for them? What do you hope will change for them? You know, one is just power. That's a conversation. Like we can, you and I, we can talk on all levels of personal development and growth, but power, like real raw power about who they are, about the capacity that they know they have, about a clarity of a vision, about specific steps. And then even just this permission of like, man, I've, there are things that I want that I've never said out loud because of my past, because of my, the box of the culture or the religion or the marriage. And we break all of those things so they can go create a clean slate, whatever they want to go create. And they'll go home. I mean, we just, like, I just was on a call today with our clients. We had women finish up last week and we're, every Monday we have our mastermind call and she gets on. And I go, how was it? Right. Everyone's like, welcome. And she goes, she just looks at the camera. She's like, I don't know why I'm going to start crying. I never cry. She's like, she starts listing all the things she said she was going to do stuff. She's been procrastinating for years, conversations that she's having things that she's confronting. Finally, things that she's got the courage to just go do and to let go of. And again, she's crying. Everyone's crying. I'm like, we did our job. We did what we were supposed to do. So curiosity here.
Um, why physical, spiritual, financial, like that's so broad. It's everything. Why, like, why don't people just hone in on one area or if it's like, Oh, we're doing all this personal development for your finances. What's, what's, what's your purpose and all that? Yeah. So there's like, like you're a guru, right? There, there's no question. You're one of the best of the best of the best. And there's personal development, there's real estate. I've always known for me, when I came to this space, I love the concept of, because I I used to help guys make money, pure money. I'd help them make a lot of money. They hit six figures for the first time, then they'd get to seven figures. And then their marriage was killing them. And I'm like, dude, that you don't even have a business problem. You got a personal problem or their lack of their faith and purpose was gone or their physical bodies were tapped out. They, the reason you can't work more is because you, you're, you're fat or you're out of shape. The reason why your, your wife doesn't want to make love to you, you're unattractive, you're needy, yeah. you're weak. It was all these personal problems. I was like, okay, so we package this where we can help a dude get his body right. Yeah. Like get it strong, the vessel. Start losing fat, get stronger spiritually, get them thinking higher purpose. Relationally, if a man's marriage is good and is, is fit, like good, great with his children, he's showing up, the money can kind of like accelerate. And for some of these guys, they just need to go make money and then everything else falls into place. So it was like this, you know, what I saw, at least for me, I was like, dude, I'm, there's there's way better guys out there this, that, that can help someone go make millions and millions of dollars. But for me, give me the full pack, give me time, physical, spiritual, relational, financial, help you to become powerful across the board, help you to track. Yeah. I mean, we have people that go pay off their homes and cars, go run Ironman, lose 150 pounds, lose 70 pounds, women. I mean, it's it's the holistic yeah. approach that I love yeah. and I love it. And I look at every other guru, like, dude, we're all on the same team, man. Like, yeah. I, again, I look up to the Jim Rohns, the Zig Ziglar's, the Tony's, yeah. you, Garrett, like just a bunch of guys. I'm like, we're everyone's got a mentor for a season of their life. And I play my role with my people. So I'm going to take a turn now. Do you mind if I mess with you a little bit? Yeah. Okay. So I want to get, I just want to get real because maybe I'm just having my own experience in this, but you know, years ago when I got in the personal development game, I had a chance to spend years reevaluating my relationship with victimhood versus power. Um, figured out all the ways that I was really inauthentic. That's a lot of my painful work at the start of my journey. Started realizing that I could be great at finance, but I could be awful in my health or I could be awful in my relationship with my wife or wasn't the dad that I wanted to be. And after over years, I had a chance to say, oh my gosh, I have it. I have the consistent system and ability where it's like, my, my, my relationships are leveling up, my finances are relationship, me and God are leveling up, my health is leveling up. And you stay in that game for years where you level up and level up and level up, but there's always another level. Like this, this, this last, 2023, man, I thought I freaking had made it on every front. And in 2023, kicked my ass. I got to do such next level inward work to figure out where I was still falling short all over again. It's been the most powerful becoming year in my life. And I'm like, I, I did not know there was another level. And now I'm playing the next game, looking at the next level. And so you can't really be a great coach in the space unless you're doing your inward work, right? Sometimes we're in warrior mode. It's like, get stuff done. And sometimes we're doing our inward work where it's just like, what else do I have to heal? What else do I have to fix? And so here's my, I mean, this is really vulnerable, but yeah. what are you, what are you, after all the years of being in the space and all the years of helping people and all the years of helping yourself, like where are you at in the game and what's going well, but also what's not going well? I love it. So man, number one, I always hire a coach. I always have at least one coach. Like that is the game that I love. Like I, I learned a lot from you in Colorado and you're on the list of guys that I'm like, one of these days I'm going to go into Chris Crone's world and, write them a check to get real estate cooking. Like I'm going to do that. Um, I always have a coach. I'm a, a student of the game. What's not working well right now. I've got these teenagers. I got a, a 16 year old, a 14 year old and 11 year old. And they're going through it. Like they are really going through it. I mean, yeah. identity, I'm Polynesian, but we grew up here in the States. I don't speak Samoan. I don't speak the language, but we've never grown up around Polynesians. And then they're part of a church that we're members of. And then there's like, they have friends who are like just trashing the church that we're members of. 
And so there's like this whole, like what we have been teaching them since they were babies. is now being develop, confronted. It's being confronted. It's being challenged. Well, and on top and of that, that, and on top of that, your dad. And it doesn't <laughs> matter how many people you've helped. These yeah. are your kids. And so, I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm guessing that at least with one of the three, there's this awkwardness of like, I've always been around my dad that's this high performance results oriented coach. I, through osmosis, I've taken it in. And sometimes when that's your child, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're listening and learning um, because your dad, you're the exception somehow to the rule and that you can't help them in a way that you've been able to help countless other people. I don't know if you're experiencing that dynamic. No, as well. 100, Chris, that's, that's, that's the game. So I pour into all these kids, all these youth in my church, even I'm teaching another co- a youth course right now for one of the companies I'm a, a part of. And again, one of my sons is like, I don't want to go be great. Yeah. I just want to have this life over here. Yeah. Also, cause they've been exposed to that. And how do I measure up to my dad? Like yeah. that's a, that's a really high expectation. It's taller. And I, I'm constantly having these conversations with them. I'm just like, whatever you want to go do son. Let's just have no regrets. Let's go get it. You want to be a truck driver? Let's go be a great truck driver. And then you'll hit a point where you might be like, Ooh, this is not going to give me what I want, but at least you have that experience. And so I've given them so much leeway. So that's, and again, I'm proud of of my sons. Like I've, I'm really, really proud of them for, again, we've, you know, we moved here to Florida from California, right? We moved. Um, We've been here two and a half years. And there's, you know, we have a standard in our home and we have these high agreements and these high standards in our home that with me and my wife for our son. So again, literally last night, we're having a conversation with him. We're like counseling our sons in our bedroom for like 45 minutes and they're talking and they're asking questions and we're just talking about life. And yeah, so that's definitely one. I think another one for me, I'm in my late forties right now. And it's like, I love, so you you talk about this concept of next level, then what's three levels beyond that? And like, what's like five, five next levels. And that one was profound for me because I'm like, whoa, the way you taught that, I'm like, wow, I didn't think about it. I always think about the next level. Then you're like, well, the next level, what's three levels beyond the next level? (laughs) Right. And so for me right now, Chris, it's like something that's maybe not working for me. if, If I can be vulnerable, it's like occasion I go into a space where I'm like, what's the purpose of all this now? Like, yeah. I just got, I go to there again. I'm like, got money, you got money, cars, houses, you got money. We got just awesome lifestyle. And occasionally I step back and I'm like, oh, am I really, am I on the path that again, I know that I'm creating the path and the meaning yeah. of the path is up to me. Yes. But I go to that space sometimes where, you know, it does my life really matter. A- yeah. Am I really, am I really making that big of a difference? Because for me, his soul purpose driven soul purpose driven like heart and mission driven so that's something for me in this space i don't know if you've experienced it but for me it's like okay oh, yeah. like you get you get to a point where you're like i got money i got stuff i can write checks for i can do whatever the heck i want to do i can impact people i can get paid to speak on a stage and we got social media we got podcasts we got all this stuff yeah am i really am i really like where i need to be am i really optimizing making a difference um, and then again, for me right now, I'm, I love, I love being big. Yeah. Um, dude, I'm, I'm three fifteen. <laughs> dude, show me and, your guts. Uh, Come on, bro. Uh, Come on. Uh, yeah. I'm that's three, one time. That's I just, one time. I just, <laughs> I just <laughs> measured them the other day when they're full pump, they're like 22s. 22s. Bro, I'm, big. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to be 18s. Uh, but, but, but then you, you asked the question. I'm going to tell you. I know. I, I, don't, I, I need a little more poly blood. I don't know. Something. I love it. I, I mean, we'll get it there. Right. But then I'm like, I've been on this build phase. I, I have. I've been like, dude, I'm, I'm done doing the whole dieting every three. Let me just go put muscle on my body. Yeah. Uh, but I know for me, like that time is coming to a place where it's like, okay, now it's, it's time to get under 300. And it's time to stay under 300 and it's time to probably get down to 280, 270. Yeah. I have an identity of being large. Yeah. I walk into a room and people are like, holy crap. Now that's my experience. I'm like, I'm six, four, you know, and I'm, <laughs> I'm 240 and people look at me like I'm big. And then you make, you make me feel like a, a kid. It's, it's nice. Actually. I like it. I, I have these, <laughs> I have these muscles. I'm not used to using on my neck where I look up to people. Um, you, you are a big dude, man. So those are some of the things for me where I'm like, yeah, no, I appreciate it's time that. to, it's time to make some shifts in my life. It's well, time to make some real transformation on things that I'm like, I've been comfortable, but it's time to shift. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. We, we create our own games. 
and we we create our boundaries and then we go after these big hairy goals they're audacious they require everything so we have to mutate and grow and evolve and mutate and grow evolve a thousand times to figure out how to be a person of our word and then to you know finally get to the outcome that we feel like will fulfill purpose and it's strange that sometimes when you finally create the thing that you thought you wanted then it's like the then it's like uh oh it's one to sustain it but two to go beyond this i actually have to shift my why again and it's interesting i i'm i'm constantly just curious about what's important in spring versus summer versus fall versus winter and i'm always just i'm always obsessed with winter what will i care about in the end because i like being early it's one of my beliefs i want to be early and it gets me thinking a lot about you know what what really matters like if you were to say hey chris what's the most important thing to you in your life i would say it's my spiritual conversations in my meditation every morning because i used to have to wait years to have a profound spiritual experience that I'm capable of producing every single day like clockwork. And it's the favorite part of my entire day. And it's so powerful that I find myself just thinking, why am I doing any of this other stuff? Right. And there's <laughs> balance and there's seasons for all things. But I think that's part of the game is that who we are today, if we keep changing and evolving, then at our deepest core, we're going to have to keep moving our why in doing what we do. And then we have these special moments in life where we hit these achievements where we then say, okay, like, what's my next while? Like I did a bodybuilding show and I dropped to 3% body fat and I, I got these pictures and I'm like, dude, I feel, I feel so good. But then guess what? When you achieve such a high achievement, what's next? And I've sometimes been curious of like Robin Williams, like I love that guy so much. And when I got yeah. news of his death, I was like, is he one of those that secretly was, was um, depressed? And on drugs and whatever or had he achieved the highest pinnacle in his career in space that there was just nothing left for him and i don't really know but i'm i'm i one of the reasons why i love to push the boundaries and hits like some insane outcome is because i know that i'm going to have to reinvent myself when i get there because who i became in the process will need to be sustained by a greater vision and so I was like finding, I, I appreciate your vulnerability because when someone that has been as successful as you is willing to be vulnerable, it just means that we're still playing that same game of cool. Who do I need to invent myself to be now based on my new why that I've discovered? And um, it's, um, you know, Chris, I, I, I'll add this to that. Like while you were talking, first of all, I appreciate you, man. Um, it's crazy because you bring up Robin Williams and I just came off immersion, this high. Then we come off of like a, you know, 5,000 or 6,000 person stage. We come off these highs. And it's just like, I dreamed of these days. I dreamed of a day where we can make all this money and help all these people. Yeah. And you come yeah. down from it, right? And then I'm sitting yeah. here in my house over the weekend decompressing. You know, and I'm just like, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Oh, like. Yeah. So I, I, I totally, I can relate. Like I'm, I'll be like a lot of dudes won't be real. I'll tell you, I go through the peak at the pit, then the peak. And then after the peak, which is my events and changing lives and being the channel and con being the conduit, having the message flow through me, I come back down and it's just like, it's like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. Now, now what? Yeah. And I go through the same thing. Yeah, that's uh, this game of, you know, it's interesting. I the, the weirdest thing that I got in 2023 was, bro, you're, you're always chasing growth. You're always change, chasing your potential. You think that if whatever isn't growing is dying. And uh, there was a part of me that said, you're doing it wrong because there's a time to grow, but then there's a time to just be where you can enjoy it. And I'm learning just in my own life how to go back and forth between this 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 growth and plateau model where i stair step up with massive growth and then i just say great now just be and enjoy it and when the time is right stair step up for massive growth and now just be and enjoy it and um there's something really comforting about just knowing that sometimes there's nothing to do just just be just enjoy just, to be. just you know there's nothing to do to be worthy yes. there's nothing to do to be enough there's nothing you have to do it's all right there available to you now and then you only get to be there so long before it's time to grow again and it's like that seems to be you know my current understanding of the game of life which is to toggle back and forth just according to inspiration intuition between growth and being 
So I'm glad that the world has a Satema that they can reach out to when they're ready for something extreme. Is that fair for me to say that you're only really looking for people that are insanely committed to transformation as opposed to people that are just kind of flirting with it? No, that's like, that's like on the one-on-one side. That's the high level. Okay. As, so, we, as we have, yeah, we have. So, okay. Um, so you have a program where you look for kind of sloppy seconds and people that are <laughs> meh. And we, we call it like, the, oh. right, there's, there's those beginners, you know, there's people who are like, let's come on straight line at the high level. Like you and I, we, we know it's like commitment and integrity. So you are looking for lame human beings too. <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> just, a, I'm a lame human being. I, but I love this because there's just a group of people that like. Oh, but you know, mediocrity though. It's like there's, because the, the, the people that need saving the most aren't the people that are on the highest trajectory. That's just for high performance. Um, right. I, there's something about the game of waking people up and just shaking them and saying, hello, are you in there? Right? <laughs> like, like yeah. life is passing you by. It's like that movie. I like that movie Click with Adam Sandler. He has this universal remote. Yep. And he's like, hey, I just want to skip some parts of life. And the remote breaks. And before you know it, he becomes a zombie that is just missing his entire life uh, because there were some parts that he thought he wanted to skip. And it turns out those were really the important parts. And um, I, I, I just, I don't know, bro. I feel like so much of the world is just sleepwalking around me. These sleepwalkers is, I feel like we're living in the modern day zombie apocalypse where I'm just trying to figure out who are the, I don't want to use the word woke, but I'm looking for the people that are awake and yes. that are ready to play and do something with their life. And they, they realize that mediocrity is its own version of enemy. It is. And, you know, like, again, I, I like I'm game changer, right? We, I wear my own shirts. I wear my brand and this concept of game changer for us was like, let's go change the game for people. So there's someone maybe, and that's maybe living at this lower standard of light yeah. and vibration, frequency, and low money. vibration, energy, low energy, human being. Like I, I can wait, I can do something for them here. What, 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 what is, something. what is that? What is, what is this entry level program for people that are like, dude, shake me up. I, I need a pattern interrupt. Uh, what does that look like? Yeah, so like we, number one, we have a four day program called Game Changer. It's in person, right? We have these two day virtual experiences. So this is not person. Titan immersion, like, rah, no. like this is like, hey, let's get together for four days and um, have meaningful yeah, it's, it's, based it's like conversation. Landmark. It's like you you go to Landmark okay. for three days plus an evening, or you go to okay. Unleash the Power Within. So we have our version of that where people can okay. come to a room and you can have honest conversations. We have two-day virtues. Our next one's called Unstoppable Mindsets in December. And yeah. people are going to get on this thing. And, and we're not talking about impossible gains and wealth beyond wealth and high production. I'm talking about overcoming fear yeah. and belief yeah. and courage yeah. and discipline. I'm talking about some of the things that are basic for us. Yeah. And yet they're so fundamental. So between two day virtuals, between obviously we have a podcast, a free podcast, right? Just access to helping people hear. Where do, message. where, where do, where do they go to find you to get all this? Like, like yeah, if, just the, if you go to my, my website, right? Satemangali, it's spelled S E T E M A G A L I.com. Mm -hmm. But the G in Samoan has an N G sound. So, so it's like, yeah. Satemangali.com. It has access to my, everything we do, all our programs and, Again, yeah. like we have funnels that bring people in and you know, you, what's the, the name of your pod? What's the name of your podcast? Game changer. Game changer. I love yeah, it. Yeah. Just game love. changer. It's like, let go be a game changer. Go change the game. Go be the person who your nieces, nephews, kids, grandkids would say, you know what? Remember uncle so-and-so remember my dad and my grandpa, he, he made all this possible. He had yeah. a, a day of courage and he took a different decision. Wow. So brother, I, um, you know, I want to get, I want to get to the wrap up because I want to give you an opportunity to do something really cool here in a moment, which is I, I put one of our difficult to fog of your brother or sisters right in front of you. And I say, okay, you got, you got 90 seconds to wake this person up. I want to know what you want to say, but um, I, I have to tell you probably the cruelest and coolest things that I do in, in my events is people will come for wealth, finance, business, real estate. And then I spend half the event on psychology. We're doing arrow breaks on throats and glass walks and fire walks and doing all this, you know, all of these things that basically are designed to say, you think you can't, but I'm going to prove, I'm going to let you prove to yourself that you can so that you start questioning your reality and you start questioning the matrix of all the other things that you believe that are not true about just how powerful you are. Um, and it sounds like that's what your world is around. I need to know more about your world. So let's please be in touch on that. But, um, you know, here's your send off, man, putting someone in front of you that is just there, they're 37 years old. 
They are millennial. They are lost. Their life is described with three letters, M-E-H. That's pronounced meh. And um, they have a hard time fogging a mirror because they're just not really about anything, but they're starting to wake up and realize that they want more out of life. They just have no idea how to make that happen. Coach me. Yeah. What do you not want in your life right now? What's not working? Tell me the truth. Be honest. Be I just, I, I can't figure out love and I hate my job. I just feel like I do it to pay the bills. And, um, I just, I just game like, I, that's my escape. I just game. Yep. Totally get it. That's like most people. So 10 years from now, 10 years from now, my man, where do you want to be? I need you to like remove the lens. I need you to dream and have ambition. I want you to just like, nothing's impossible. Nothing's I did, off the table. I, 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 I want to date like my best friend, marry like the girl of my dreams. Um, I, I would, I would love to be fit. Uh, but I'd love to have a career that I actually, you know, care about. Do you know what that career is yet? I don't. Yeah. Are you willing to do what's required? Are you willing to do the work to go get it? I don't know. I'm it's throwing fair. the worst one at you because I hate no, it. I love it. People I love say it. that it's, to me. That's okay. Know. Like that's like, I'm going to punch. I'm going to throat punch you right now to wake you. Up. <laughs> and I just say, I'm like, Again, with with a person like this, you talk from you talk to them and you listen to them. And sometimes I I could go with the wave. Sometimes I could say, "Great, man! It sounds like you're happy where you're at. It sounds like you're really happy." No, it I, like I, you're I good. no 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 no. I'm not happy. It's not working. Okay. Do you want to change? Yes. Yes. No? I I I don't know what to do, but I want to change. If you knew, if we gave you something to do that could guarantee change your world. Are you ready to do it? Would you be, would you have the courage to go do it? How, how guaranteed? You do exactly what I tell you to do. Your world's going to change. Yeah. I and do. it's going to be hard. It will challenge the hell out of you, you because you are very addicted. You're very comfortable. You, you, your hell is so familiar. You want nothing to do with an unknown heaven. You'd rather come back to an unfamiliar hell. And the truth is, my man, you can stay here. And in a year from now, we're going to arrive to October 30th, 2024. And if you stay on this path, like there's no guarantee that you're going to make it because you're continuing to go on a downward spiral. But if you want to get on the train with me, if you want to lock arms with me, if you want to just take it one step at a time, guarantee capital G, all caps, highlighted, underscored, and italicized guarantee, I can get you to move and to rewire how you think. It's going to be hard. It's going to be challenging. And brother, you better get ready because if you tell me you're in, you're going to want to quit. We all do. Do you guys and know I what? Want you. Do you guys know what Satemanali is demonstrating right now? And you want to know why this is so seductive to draw someone in that feels so lifeless? It's that he's putting faith. He's basically saying, lean on me. Lean on me and I will show you how to lean on you. For a moment, lean on me because and I know that I can get you there if you'll do what you need to. And guys, that's powerful. <laughs> that is a lending of faith that is so powerful. Uh, I, Satema, have been able to do that with people and get them to drop meds, overcome, I kid you not, like terminal illnesses, basically getting them to believe in possibilities when they don't and when everyone else is telling them that they can't, but their life is on the line. That right there that you demonstrated, brother, that was that was fire and that was power. I love it so much. Uh, my and friends, Satema Nali. Here, like, I'm emotional over here. I know, like, I feel you. Real. I feel you. I feel you. And that's the cool part. I love it so much. Thank you. Dude, bro, you let me put, I don't know you. You let me put you on the spot like crazy today, um, which could have been one of the big asinide moves, uh, period. But I just love how you rolled because uh, there was nothing easy about any of the questions I asked. Just tapping into your passion, I, I, like, I can feel your world and I'm like, shoot, dang it, I really want more proximity to being in your world and knowing like, what you do. And um, I love your mission, I love your purpose. I wanna tell you on your darkest days when you're lonely and that you're at the top and you just finish helping all these people, brother, I want you to know that you're always worth it, that you're making a difference in the world. I'm a believer in Satema Nali. And um, I hope everyone else listening to you today is as well. Satema Nali, that is S-E-T-E-M-A-G-A-L-I.com. Did I spell it right? Uh, yes, go sir. there, learn about this man uh, because um, 
He's willing to go into the trench, into the ditch. He's willing to go where other people just aren't. And if that's what you need in your life, or if you're already operating at a high performance, but you want to go to another level, I'm telling you, man, I'm feeling it in my bones. This is the dude to connect with. So Tema, any final uh, send off words for everyone listening today? If you knew how short life really was, if you knew that you're going to be in the dust and dirt in a matter of time, you would not be afraid to ask for anything. So go ask for what you want and go get it. That's it. I love it. Brother, thank you so much, everybody. You've been joining the Chris Crone Show. Satema, thank you so much. We'll see you guys on the next episode.